Good morning, everyone. Grace and peace to you from our Lord Jesus Christ and all the saints here in Central California. Uh, I don't know what's going on with my phone this morning. This is this is actually take two. I was just talking and talking and talking, and I looked down and saw my phone was no longer recording, so I must have touched a button or something. I'm still getting used to all the new buttons on this iPhone 16. Not a pro, just a flat iPhone 16 is what I bought. <clears throat> Excuse me. It's early, and I'm still sleepy. Um, so it's been kind of a slow week. Um, there's not a whole lot going on. I haven't had a whole lot of, uh, um, I mean, for instance, this week, the only job that's been required of me is to set up a new VLAN and, and give it a layer three and VRRP and all that good stuff and extend that VLAN to our topper rack switches. Um, that's really been the only thing going on today, or today, this week. This is, I'm taping this on a Wednesday because I don't want to forget again. <laughs> but uh, yeah, it's been kind of a slow week. Um, wireless project is kind of, it's not on hold. We're just, we're waiting for the final, final report. Uh, because they gave us a final report and um, the, the final design that they gave us was gonna require 482, five, anyway, close to 500 APs. Uh, we only bought 300. <laughs> and we currently only have 200, 220. So we, I, th I thought when I bought them, 220, we'll throw in 80 more. Like, wow, no, not even close. Um, so yeah, there's no, there's no way we can buy an extra almost 200 APs. I mean, we could buy another, you know, 10, 20, even probably up to 50, but yeah, I can't buy 200 more. Um, double the price of what we've already paid. Um, pretty close, close to it. Um, so when, once he presented this to us, uh, well, let, me, let me show you the actual, this is the, the actual floor plan they came up with. I'm going to try not to touch a button this time and make it stop. We're still running? Yeah, we're still running. Good. So that's the actual design they came up with. This is just the first floor as an example. Uh, this building has three floors. There's other buildings with four, and then there's a bunch of other single-story buildings all over the place. And all told, it was going to be 500 APs, close to it. 480. We'll go for 80. Um, so we told them, okay, um, so given that we don't have 480 APs, given that the hospital has actually put the panic button process, uh, project on hold, and the panic button was just, um, it was going to be used mainly in emergency the emergency area and a couple of the other, uh, like med surge and, and uh, ICU, in fact. Um, but I mean, for emergency, we've already got lots of security there. The security station, basically, the security guard office is right outside emergency. And there's always a, a security guard stationed outside the emergency entrance, inside the waiting room, and they randomly patrol inside the emergency department anyway so <clears throat> they decided well they can get by for now because in all honesty nurses uh, medical uh, doctors nurses all the medical staff they get attacked almost daily here um, I'm not talking about with knives and guns and stuff but sometimes yes with knives and guns uh, but you more often than not it's 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 an upset family member that's the number one and the, the second one will be an upset or confused patient. Um, they'll lash out at the medical staff. And uh, so they need something. They need some way of, you know, if they're, if they're trapped inside the room, cornered, and can't get away from this person, they, need to, they want to be able to hit a panic button. Now, we have these things here. I loaded this earlier when I was, didn't know, stopped recording. Um, have these things called vocera that they wear. Now we've got some newer 
badges than that one, but uh, the, that's the vast majority of what we got out there right now. We're slowly swapping them out. But they hit that little silver button at the top there and they give it a voice command and say, you know, call security or call whoever. And then security will answer and then you tell security what's the problem. And apparently that's, that's not quite good enough. They want to just be able to hit a panic button and it automatically tells security, hey, 911, this location. Um, but as I said, they've put that project on hold. And uh, so we're not going to need this kind of density right now. And if they do want to revive that project after we've rolled out these APs, um, they have these uh, exciters that they can put in different areas to add uh, to the RTLS coverage. And those exciters don't cost anywhere near what uh, an extreme... 50, 20 access point costs. So they're gonna redesign this and remove some of those APs and hopefully we're gonna get our count down to um, 300. You know, if they can't, if it's a little bit more, that's fine, we'll order some more APs, but we don't wanna have to order a whole bunch more. So they're gonna do a redesign. So that's, that's gonna be coming out this week. Um, tomorrow, they're gonna send the new design and hopefully I won't see 482, was it, uh, hang on a second, I've got it right here somewhere, um, miscellaneous info, I think, uh, this spreadsheet here, I think had the actual numbers on it, hang on, nope. Oh, this one. Summary list, I think. Yeah. So, I'm sorry, I was way, yeah, no, I was right. 473, okay, not 480, 470. But in the main hospital alone, they had 389 of them. That's probably where I got the 80 number. 389 just in the main hospital. So on this floor and the next floor, but they got really good coverage. I mean, if you look at their um, coverage map, ah, stop it. That's five gig coverage, I'll go that. It's five gig coverage for the hospital. And um, that's pretty good. Um, but it's not gonna be <laughs> that great when uh, the new design comes out, I'm sure. Um, well, they'll probably have less APs, but just boost up the boost up the volume, as we say. Um, and you'll see a couple of areas where it's kind of gray. These are elevators here, so we don't really care. We don't. We tell them we don't provide X, you know, wireless coverage inside the elevator. Um, yeah, RF doesn't penetrate elevators real well. We could put an AP inside the elevators, I guess. But personally, I wouldn't want to spend any time inside a, uh, well, look up Faraday cage sometime. I wouldn't want to spend time inside a metal can with RF energy being radiated around me. You know, even, even if it's just a minute or two, I, I just don't want to be there. So elevators, we don't need. This is a stairwell. We don't provide that in the stairwells because um, we discourage employees from hanging out in stairwells. Um, and yeah, this one's an engineering space over here. This is uh, our air handler is in this room. And you know, if you can get Wi-Fi in there, great. But I mean, we really don't need it. In, don't need it there. So, uh, yeah, waiting to see what that new, um, what this new predictive survey is going to look like. And 6 gig strength looks just about like the 5 gig strength did. Uh, first floor, what is this? Oh, signal to noise ratio. It's pretty good in most of the first floor areas. That's the signal to noise ratio. Green is good, obviously. 
Yellow is not as good. You see right over here, this, this yellow right here, and then it just drops out because there's a lot of noisy equipment in here anyway, so uh, it's going to be pretty bad coverage. Um, that was 2.4 gig. This is for 5 gigahertz signal to noise ratio and for 6 gigahertz, which we're probably not even going to use for a while. So, yeah, there's that. And yeah, second, this is the second floor, and it's pretty, pretty similar to the first floor, just a lot of density. Um, we've got almost this many APs in this area right now, as it is. This is uh, um, our operating rooms, surgery, this, this section of the hospital right here. And um, there's already almost that many APs there right now. The only thing he added was these guys in the, in the hallways here. And this is our uh, PACU. Uh, we used to call it the recovery room, post-anesthesia recovery. Post-anesthesia care unit, that's what PACU stands for. We, we've got one AP here and one AP here right now, so all he did is just move that over a little bit. And then, you know, med surge and ICU, um, pretty much uh, pretty much the same as downstairs. So, yeah. So that's, that's kind of what the maps look like right now. There's a lot of other extraneous information on there that, um, it's the same same thing over and over but just different floors and a lot of uh they just talked about how their me testing methodology which uh yeah so uh yeah that's uh, pretty much where we stand um the testing was pretty cool the way they come up with this predictive stuff let me get back up here near the top i think that the, my last video cut off before we got there um, so to, to, to do that predictive map, they, they want to do, take some actual measurements, you know, they could say, well, we can draw on the floor plan, you know, you can see all the APs on the floor plan, but on the floor plan, they also draw in the walls, each wall on our floor plan for all our plants were dr drawn in by, um, extreme and, uh, attenuation values are given to those walls so they could see how much the signal is going to attenuate going through the walls. Um, and their software has like default values for uh, drywall and brick and concrete. But what they do is actually kind of smart is um, they measure it. So what they do is they set up an AP like this one here and attach to it with their uh, Ekahow device. And then they just start walking away and measure signal drop off through the door, door open, door closed and then on the other side of the walls, and then they just keep walking out farther and farther away from this thing to and measure. And so for 2.4 gig, this is, this is what they actually measured. This is how far away they could get. You know, so this is, this is how much the uh, walls were attenuating the signal. And uh, so what they would do is start walking away, measure it, and then they would run the predictive uh, software and just start ad adjusting it, adjusting the attenuation values until this side over here on the right roughly matched this over here on the left. Which, so on the left that's measured and on the right that's predictive. So that's for 2.4 gig, and that's for 5 gig, and this is for 6 gig. So 5 and 6 are pretty similar. And uh, yeah, once they measure all that and have the uh, the actual measured attenuation values of the walls, they go in there and they draw all these walls out on their predictive software and then run it, run the software. And so that's pretty cool. Um, and the Ekahow, I thought that was like the coolest thing ever. So let me see if I can find an Ekahow. Sidekick. Uh, that's what they had. Let me get to uh, where do they talk about this? There it is. Yeah, this is exactly what they had. 
So he just wear one of those things, this thing around on a sling around his shoulder. And then they had iPads. They weren't using, you know, a little smartphone like that. They're actually using iPads because they're old like me and they, they can't see it. But, um, yeah, wow, what a, what a difference from, you know, walking the halls with a laptop with a hundred antennas on it, which is what I have in the other room here. Okay, six antennas, but still, um, it's a pretty slick device. And the one, the thing this does that I just love, it's so cool. If you don't have a floor plan, uh, they had some software on it called Just Go. And you basically, it's, it uses the camera. So you, you start pointing your, your iPad or your smartphone or whatever you got. You just start pointing it around at all the walls inside the building. And just keep going inside the building. Then you walk outside of the building and go inside every room. And when you're done, it's, it's not the prettiest, but it works. It generates a floor plan and tells you the square footage. And it is within fractions of feet um, on accuracy as far as, you know, square footage and the floor plans. And Oh man, it was just amazing. I, I loved that. I, I wanted that. Just, just give me that software. So if you know of any floor plan mapping software that's just standalone, um, that you don't have to spend thousands of dollars on an Eka how to get, I'd love to know about it. So uh, I'd love to make a floor plan for my house without, you know, doing old school and drawing it out and stuff. So anyway, yeah, that's the device they used. It was, uh, it was really, really cool. So anyway, I am just waiting for that report to come out tomorrow. Um, can't wait to see what they come up with. Hope it's less than 300. Hope it's less than 350 because we could probably pull out another 50, but I don't know if we can pull out another, another... 200 so anyway we'll, we'll give everybody really really good vocera coverage for now and uh that'll stem a lot of the complaints and like like i said in the videos before uh the boss said hey whatever this is this is what it is it is what it is the vendor has been out they've mapped it all out they've come back out and they've measured it then it you know it is what they predicted it would be don't complain to us about wireless anymore. <laughs> There's nothing more we can do. You're going to have to live with what you got. So, uh, yeah, I love that attitude. Anyway, and that's all you got for this week, guys. Um, if you like what you saw, click the subscribe button. Click the notification bell if you so desire. Give me a thumbs up. Give me a thumbs down. And uh, give me a comment. Ask some questions. Um, Give me some answers, especially on that floor plan mapping software. I'd love that. I have to look for that. I haven't even tried looking for it. I'm so lazy. Um, <laughs> so maybe I'll find something. And a couple of you asked how you can get a hold of me. Um, sorry, I don't do live phone calls. Somebody asked if they could talk to me on the phone. I was like, mm, no, I, I really hate the telephone. I never even answer my desk phone. So I'm sorry. I just, I hate telephones. Um, I'm an email guy, old school. I love email. You know, you can write down exactly what you meant, you're gonna want to say, and then you can backspace if you didn't mean to say that. So, um, yeah, if you want to get a hold of me, you can contact me at Network Life. No, I'm sorry, Network Admin Life at pm.me. Network Admin Life at Papa Mike dot Mike Echo. So all right, we'll uh we'll catch you guys all next week. God bless.